what these are doing is they're meeting that same condition. They're saying, if something happens, then make another action happen. Um, if this and that is my favorite because a four-year-old can use it, and it basically handles super, uh, super basic interactions, it, because of that, it kind of sticks to social media platforms, so Twitter, Facebook, um, it does some cool stuff on Spotify, some cool stuff with IoT devices, but for the most part, it's very low level. If, uh, if you post something to Twitter, uh, then it posts that same thing out to your Facebook or it updates your status somewhere. Um, Zapier does the same kind of thing, but it builds these, uh, it builds much deeper interactions. So instead of just a new user, or a new issue is created on GitHub. Um, it sends you a Slack alert, which is something that if this and that can do. Um, Xavier can say, if your name is mentioned in an issue or in a pull request, it'll send you a message on Slack and give you a full body of the text. And you know, it goes, it just goes that next level deep. Um, we're going to focus on Xavier because Xavier is really the one that uh, that can lead do enough things as a part of its platform that it can automate your entire business theory. So uh, let's just talk about this whole concept of automating business. Um, we have, if we have something that happens, so we get an order in an e-commerce store, uh, we want three things to happen. We have maybe we, uh, we add them to a database that's going to be added to our, our mailing list. Maybe we send them a tweet saying, hey, you got a cool shirt, thanks a lot, man. Um, and then we add their order to our accounting form, which automates a whole bunch of reports. Um, so each of those things can, uh, each of those things can uh, then lead to other triggers. So let's say C was adding one, one new customer to our, uh, to our database of customers and orders. Um, well, maybe that uh, fires it off to our accounting team to uh, so that they know that they have a new order to account for. It shoots it off to our fulfillment team so that they can start working on that process. It sends it to the CEO because he's just that big of a micromanager. <laughs> and he needs to know about every order. Well, that, those can go on to trigger other events. And then those can go on to trigger other events. And then those can tr go on to trigger other events. All these are basically just communications. Small communications between either people or software. Usually, software is involved somewhere along the line. And you can automate all of these communications of information. So, uh, I'm going to go through an exercise with you guys. Um, we're going to pretend that we're an event organizer startup. So, uh, let's say we just really like uh, building events for developers, like developers. So, uh, we host a bunch of events through the year. We also sell a couple of products on the side because we have the e-commerce or something along those lines. Um, so, but as a as that startup, we're going to we have some key actions that we're going to do. We're going to manage our attendees. Um, we're going to make sure that they're in our databases and they know and they get everything that we promise them when they sign up for our event. We send promotion out to them about our other products that we have and our other events going on. And we have to make sure that the fulfillment process happens, so we have, we're manufacturing swag for them. Um, well, if you're doing all of that manually, that would be a pain in the butt if, say, you're in a big important meeting and then 100 new orders just come in. Um, some really successful marketing campaign happen. So you're sitting in this really important meeting, and you have to now start to manage those orders immediately. So you either have to ditch the meeting and say, we'll meet about this later, Either you can try to remember it later and hope that you don't forget anything along the way. Um, you can try to delegate all this, all this stuff uh, immediately to somebody else. Um, I don't recommend that because usually some something, some information gets lost along the way. Um, but the thing you cannot do is lose focus in this super important hypothetical meeting. So <laughs> um, if you had automated all this, um, like we're about to do. You wouldn't even have to think about it, and you know that every customer is handled without you having to get involved at all. So we're going to go through this. So the trick, the steps to automating your business. First thing, uh, first thing I'll say is, if you're starting a new business, anytime you do something twice, just automate. The rule is just automate early and often. Um, you. And the sooner that you can get things uh, happening automatically, the less you have to worry about that behind when you're starting to 
expand your business. Um, so I'm going to check this out. We've got this hypothetical business model of this hypothetical event management company. Um, so we're going to look at this. This is our this is our base, super basic business flow. Um, we have when a customer re you create a new event, a customer registers the event. We're going to add them to a Google sheet. This is the business flow that we're going to build. We're going to add them to a Google sheet, and then we're going to add them to our Mailchimp list so that they can get into like our automated. Uh, Mailchimp has this really cool thing where you can schedule out like weeks and weeks and weeks of uh, target mail campaigns. So we're going to put them into an automated marketing campaign. Uh, we are going to send that same customer information over to Trello, which is what our fulfillment team uses. They make t-shirts and stuff. So they're going to get tossed into Trello, and Trello is project management and just manages the phases of the process. Um, so, and that will send the, the important information to the fulfillment team so that they can start on their part and you don't have to talk to them. Um, and then we're going to do something really cool that I discovered during, while I was making this presentation. We're going, to send auto, we're going to do an automated send of a handwritten card as a thank you. There's a service called Thankster that does this. Like, you're an API, so it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool stuff. So, um, so we're going to get pretty personal with this business as well. Um, we're not going to go all through all these steps. Oh, let me go back one second. We're not going to go through all these steps. We're just going to go through this part that adds them to MailChimp. Um, the rest of the steps you're going to see are pretty much the same. Um, and the cool thing about this is the only manual thing we've done so far in this business is we create a new event on Eventbrite. And so Eventbrite's going to send us our customer information and then it's going to start going all the way through uh, the business world. So that's it. So let's get started. Oh, Zoom City. Okay. <laughs> so uh, as I said, we're going to do this through Xavier. Um, so the way we do this, and the reason why I'm doing this in front of you rather than like having just the steps or just talking about it is because it literally takes like 10 months uh, max to build this whole flow. Um, so we're just going to do this. We're going to click on the first thing that we want the trigger to be from. That's going to be Eventbrite. We're going to say that when Eventbrite gets a new attendee, uh, this is our Eventbrite account. We're just account, uh, signing into that. I already signed into that. Um, we're going to look at all of our events that we create on Eventbrite. And I created this event called Super Happy Hackathon. I'm going to click that one. Um, Super Happy Hackathon is over here. So, uh, so we're going to continue. Um, this is just letting us know what we picked. And uh, what this is going to do, once I click Fetch and Continue, it's going to fetch the most recent order. So let's make an order real quick. This takes two seconds because Eventbrite's nice, right? Like it only asks you for like your name and your email and then you're done. So, we're going to go in here. I asked a couple other questions. So how old are you? What's your t-shirt size? And what's your Twitter handle? So <laughs> I don't use Twitter. Right. <laughs> um, so that's it. We have our order process. You can share it on Facebook, do a little marketing for the company that we're running from. That's kind of cool. Um, so we have a new order that just went through Eventbrite. We're going to fetch the most recent order. Take for granted how fast my internet is at home. <laughs> there we go. All right, so it successfully tested and got a recent attendee. And remember how we only put in a little bit of information into Eventbrite? Eventbrite gets a ton of information about you. Um, so this is really cool for, uh, for order management, but uh, I'm not going to dive into that. The important parts are uh, we need our name, we need our email, we need the t shirt size that was down here somewhere, and our Twitter handle and some other little things. So that's it. Uh, we just click continue and we're done setting up the event right now. We want this to send to Google Sheets. We're going to make a new row in a spreadsheet. Um, so we're going to create a spreadsheet row when this first event right trigger happens. Uh, connecting our Google Sheet. We pick a spreadsheet and what you have to do uh, is, oh, I forgot to skip step two. Step two is prepping your apps uh, ahead of time. <laughs> so. Uh, what I did here is I just created a super, super simple spreadsheet that has a bunch of column headers. That's pretty much all the information that Xavier needs. So we create these column headers, and now we go back to Xavier, we click the spreadsheet, uh, we select the spreadsheet that we made. Now I have one 
sheet. And then it auto-populates all those column headers. And so from all that information that we saw from the metroid, we start grabbing things like order number, event name, first name, last name, email. I should have made this last video. <laughs> uh, their t-shirt size. So remember how that was a custom question. So uh, when there's a custom question in Eventbrite, all you I have to do is just type the text of the question, something like that. Our Twitter handle. And we continue. All right, so this is what, uh, from our test data that we got from Eventbrite, this is what uh, we'd be autofilling under each of the column headers. Prepare your apps, 
build the triggers, and have a beer with you. <laughs> <laughs> Just a quick question, is there anything in there to maybe automate text to go out to phones and so forth? Yeah, uh, so I'll show you that. Um, so if we go back to Xavier here, we explore. Um, so they have hundreds of apps that they work with. But one really cool thing is they have a whole bunch that they've built themselves. So you have texting, which you can do. You can do RSS, so you can set up a trigger where like every time your CEO sends you an email, uh, it goes into an RSS feed that you check out every morning or something. Uh, if uh, you can drop code in, so if uh, say you want to publish every new attendee, uh, I mean, sorry, new um, uh, employee at a company. You're talking about your, you're building a background for your culture and stuff, so uh, you send out an email to your company that starts out with the subject, new employee. You can grab that uh, that new employee tag, send that as a trigger to code by Xavier. You can build an HTML page using that text, and then auto-post it to your WordPress blog or whatever blog that you want to hook up to. Um, most of them have email triggers. And then for software that isn't on Xavier, there's, I, I can't think of very many emails that don't have um, email, I mean, sorry, and many applications that don't have email notifications. So they have email parser. Um, email parser is super sweet. I opened it up because it is super sweet. Um, what it does is anytime you get like a template email, like order confirmations, which this would be really good for like accounting, um, uh, anything, any automated email that you usually get, you can grab out the parts of that email because you know it's going to come in the same every time. You can grab parts of that email that you want and then toss that into a spreadsheet and then build your uh, triggers just the same way. So, kind of cool stuff. Do you have any favorite automations that have given you the most value or the same most time? A funny one actually came from If This Then That. Um, I read a ton of blogs on Medium. And uh, it's, I take the bus into work, so I'm usually reading two, three, four a day. And they're all in program. Um, so I built a couple of things where I, I was reading a lot of really good content, and I don't want to go through and post that blog every time, uh, like to every one of my social media outlets to kind of let my people know that this is what I'm reading. Um, I didn't want to go through that process every single time. So I built it this and that script so that if I part a blog on Medium, then it posts out to LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and because of that, I've had uh, recruiters and interestingly speaker requests um, for because of the content that I'm sharing, and it's usually like a little bit of comfort Twitter. And I just said in the beginning of this, I don't use Twitter. So I've had value provided to me from Twitter because I've automated Twitter. Uh, Xavier? Yeah. Uh, it's uh, free for five trigger chains. Um, and uh, there, I can look at it real quick. Yep. Um, so there's, there's limitations on that too. Uh, if we look at our plans here, this gives you an idea. I would tell you it's uh, like 50 bucks a month or 20 bucks a month for what you're really like going to be doing. Um, I, that 20 bucks a month is totally worth it. Uh, I think it is because and that, like, all that time that you save is just nuts. I don't worry. Also, he mentioned <laughs> single databases. You have to pay at least less than what you have to pay for single database access. Yeah. So, any, any applications that you connect into, uh, for example, like the MailChimp one, uh, MailChimp's free up to a certain amount when you have to pay for it. It doesn't have anything to do, like, you know, it's not. You have to have an account with the software that you want to connect with, right. which you know, that makes sense. Um, you touched on WordPress. So can you use a WordPress new user registration as a trigger? And if so, do you have, what do you have to do to your install or anything to, to save your just watch it? Whoops. Find out what all the things that WordPress can do right now. Uh, you can post and comment, web hooks, you can post tag, comment status. Uh, looks like it doesn't get a new user. Um, it does get form submission. Uh, so anytime you get a form submission, it usually goes to a database. You can 
there's always a way, like, you know, if you can't do exactly what you're thinking, there's a way that you can do it. Um, you know, so if you're, if you're storing all of your users in a database somewhere and you have an update to that database, you can throw that over to whatever you want. Is it GitHub? Mm -hmm. I have a trigger on Zapier where uh, I get, um, where anytime I'm mentioned on our company GitHub repos because it's really difficult to keep track of all the issues and PRs that are going on, um, it shoots me uh, it shoots me a message in Slack with a full body and who uh, who mentioned me and a direct link to that uh, comment. Um, what are you looking for specifically? Oh, I'll see if you do codes, I'll see if you can like, have something like uh, update your code and get up a little bit. <laughs> I don't think it gets that deep, but I mean that's uploading to the repo, so you're getting into like get branches and stuff. That's not, uh, I think that's probably a little deeper than what they do. Um, but there's some pretty cool stuff. I mean, there's, it's, it, it goes pretty deep for the most part. When you start getting that specific, then, um, then it starts to, that's not a new pull request, you can say if somebody says if somebody makes a change, you can do it. Send out a pull request. Yeah, yep. Um, you can do that. Um, one thing that I think is really cool here, too, if you get like a web form, say like your app has a, has a web form on it that's a bug report, um, you can have a subject, a message, and like whether or not it's a blocker for whatever they're trying to do. And you can have it so that if it gets submitted and the column says it's a, it's a blocker, it immediately makes a GitHub issue. So that would be that's it. The ability to create triggers based off of milestones. Like let's say I have a bunch of users that are signing up for my event, and I just want to know every time or something like that. Yes. Yeah, I am not positive on that. Um, I I would think that it can. Um, and uh, I don't see I just haven't <coughs> Uh, like two questions actually. Have you integrated the Google integration with like, um, I don't know what you call it, private label, uh, Google Office, where you know you get like your own script here and everything? Like my, oh, yeah. my employer, you know, our email is through Gmail. Yeah, so uh, I mean, if, if you have a, if it's a Google account, it's managed by Google, and you've got G Suite and everything, it, it all connects. Um, you just have to be able to log into it. Okay. So, and then, um, I'm wondering about as far as batching, like you had a uh, you had a thing where just every single order sent a notification to your vendor, and I can see vendors that don't want to know about every single order. They right. Say, Tell me again. Yeah. So this is kind of a trap. Um, <laughs> for uh, for something like that, you can um, you there you know if your if your database gets to a certain line, you can update a spreadsheet or something with um, the totals, uh, and then from that you can send that to your Something along those lines. Um, you, you know, as I said, if there's, if you can't do it directly, so if, to answer the question about um, whether or not you can do it based on values, um, if you have a calculation in a spreadsheet uh, that creates a new row or a new tri basically triggers something new, you can build a trigger off of that. Um, so if there's not a direct way within Zapier, um, there is a, there's always a workaround that you can do, and it'll just be the same. Anyone else? Cool. If anyone else wants to come chat, uh, come grab a beer with me later. Thanks, guys. <laughs>